Hey, Brain Sappers, I'm Austin. And I'm Boomer Booger. And we're going to show you how to conduct an investigation using methods scientists use. Yeah, it's how scientists study and learn about everything. Scientific, Scientific investigation. Whoa, did you see that? Yeah, that was cool. Awesome. Anyway, we've asked our good friend and competitive swimmer, Emily Grace Garcia, to help us out. And she's really excited. Hey, look, you see her? Oh, there she is. Hey, hey Emily. Emily. What's you up, girl? Did I swim for you? Uh, She's just playing. Okay, let's go through the ways a scientist might investigate a, 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 a question. Hey, look, look, you with me? Oh, never left you wrong. Okay, so Emily swims three strokes. Right, the freestyle, the breaststroke, and the butterfly. And what we want to know is which stroke can Emily swim, swim the fastest? fastest? Our friend Art's going to help us explain our investigation and set up the way we'll present our findings. Hey, Art, Art you there? Art. Hello, Art. Art. Hey, Art, you ready? Great. So investigations start with observing and asking questions. We've been observing Emily swim various swim strokes, and we wondered, which stroke can Emily swim the fastest? Right, now we will form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a statement that can be tested. Since we've been observing Emily swim all three strokes, our hypothesis is Emily can swim the freestyle stroke the fastest. Next, we'll plan and execute an experiment. Oh man, we've got a good plan too. In the next few weeks, Emily will be competing at several swim meets. She'll be competing in the 50-meter freestyle, the 50-meter breaststroke, and the 50-meter butterfly. And we're going to collect all the data we need to answer our question. At each swim meet, our variables will remain the same so that the data we collect is accurate. Variables are things that can change during an experiment. But in our case, the variables will be controlled. We'll have Emily, of course, a pool that measures 50 meters, a buzzer that signals the start of the race, a timer to time the race, a notepad and pencil to record the times, a video camera to record the race, and plenty of sunscreen to protect us from the sun. Nice job, Art. We'll be back when we've collected our data. Uh, book? Yeah. Uh, what are you wearing? Don't you know? Safety gear, man. Safety gear. Ah, uh -huh, good point. Whenever you're conducting a science investigation, make sure you're always using the appropriate safety gear. You ready to do this? Yep. I've got the camera, timer, and notepad. Let's do it. All right, Emily, ready or not, here we come. Great stuff. Oh, hey guys, we had a great time collecting data and watching Emily swim. Now we're editing a video to support our hypothesis. Yeah, Emily did awesome, and we have the data to show it. Hey, Art, can you help us out? Uh, Art, who is that? That's us, man. I don't know about you, but I look good. <laughs> can we just move on and create a chart and graph showing the data we collected? Okay, great. So Emily competed in four swim meets. At her first meet, her times were 33.87 seconds in the 50-meter free, 37.32 seconds in the 50-meter butterfly, and 
45.33 seconds in the 50 meter breast. At Emily's second meet, her times were 37.78 seconds in the 50 meter free, 42.25 seconds in the 50 meter butterfly, and 51 seconds in the 50 meter breast. At Emily's third swim meet, she switched it up a bit. Oh, that's right. She swam the 100 meter fly instead of the breaststroke. Yep, so Emily's times were 37.09 seconds in the 50 meter free and 40.41 seconds in the 50 meter fly. At Emily's final meet, her times were 37 seconds for the 50 meter free and 35 seconds for the 50 meter butterfly. Okay, Art, now that you have all the data, draft the results for us. Nice job, Art. Now we can analyze the data and form our final conclusion. Definitely. If you look at the chart and the graph, it's easy to see that our hypothesis was supported by the data we collected at Emily's swim meets. Emily can swim the freestyle stroke the fastest. Thanks, Art. Scientific investigation. Now all we have to do is set up our science display board and prepare for our presentation. Hey, Book, you're finished with that video? Yep, just wrapped it up. Let's do it. OK, guys, here it is. Science investigation on display. Yep, we used all the methods that scientists might use. First, we observed and asked the question. Question, which stroke can Emily swim the fastest? Then we formed a hypothesis based on what we observed at Emily's swim practice. Remember, a hypothesis is a statement that can be tested. Our hypothesis was, Emily swims the freestyle stroke the fastest. Next, we planned and executed an experiment. Yep, we did that. And we also have a procedure and materials to go with it. We collected data and analyzed results. Here's a video showing Emily swim various swim strokes at four separate meets. And finally, we formed a conclusion. And there it is. Emily, Emily swims, swims the freestyle stroke, stroke the, the fastest. fastest. Thanks for watching, and good luck with all your scientific investigations. Austin, there's one more thing to say. Oh, yeah. Let's get Art to help us out. You've just been brain zapped. See ya.